This is what multi-story biodiversity looks like in plant life. Ah, with the help of a dog passing through. But it keeps going up and up and up and up and up. That is multi-story biodiversity. At the top is beech trees, uh, ash trees, alder, oak, lime. This is hawthorn. Then there's nettles. Then there's cow parsley. Then you come down here and there's vetches. Come down here and there's dandelions and grasses. Come down here, more vetches and daisies. This daisy hasn't come out yet. Buttercups. This is what biodiversity of flora looks like to support the biodiversity of fauna. So it's not clean and tidy, it's messy and chaotic. But you need areas where the grass gets, or the understory gets scrunched down for other kind of animals. And you also need areas that are mown for short grasses and short grass flowers and things like that like these fellas here. Whoops, hello pup. And then if you look over here, these are more herbs that like to be on the understory in the short grasses. Here's a daisy, oxide daisy. Here's grasses and a dog. And then there's buttercups. And look, there's a bee pollinating the vetch. Then if we come back in here where I've just walked over, here is an ant nest. You can see this is an ant nest because of the granulaness of the soil that they've dug down. So they're recycling nutrients from the bottom. There's another place. And ants prefer the shorter grasses. Oh, there's another ant's nest there. It's probably the same one. Right here. Oh, hello you. So, oh no, that's a bigger beetle that's got a um, different kind of thing. Yes, very exciting. Oh, very exciting, isn't it, puppy? So that is what biodiversity looks like. A chaotic mess that is intricately, intricately woven together and part of a whole, not as we would like to have it managed and refined and everything in its right place. Nature does know best. So, and there's dog poop, which dung beetles will find, probably. And here's a bit of fuchsia. This is not native to Ireland. It came from Spain originally, but the bees love it. So the, this fuchsia bush, I chopped off a, a few branches off the side of the road and stuck it into this embankment. And it's this huge, magnificent, that's about, that's about 20 years worth of growth there. I think I stabbed that into the ground 20 years ago. But it loves being next to this huge ash tree. And then there's um, at least half a dozen different cherry trees along there. So this is my woodland biodiversity, which I have eliminated the monoculture of ivy inside of. So if you go into the woodland, you'll see the understory of this bit of woodland is full of plant life, which the ivy suppressed. Here we're kind of where we're mowing and mulching and throwing weeds, but the weeds, if they'll live, they can reproduce under here. But here, this used to be, when I came home, this understory was completely obliterated with ivy. And there's small cherry trees and over there, you can see there's elderflower in the understory. There's more cherries. There's some evergreens. And there is a bit of ivy, but not a huge amount. It doesn't dominate the woodland. Where ivy dominates woodland, it takes over and becomes a monoculture and you lose your biodiversity. See this, you see the cleavers, cow parsley, and look, the seeds are ripening. So the birds are gonna be going mad for the seeds when they ripen. So that is what biodiversity and farming 
and forestry for biodiversity means as much plant life as possible. If you look right there, that hole right there, that's where woodpecker family lives, or lived rather. They've um, fledged and flown. So that great ash tree, long may it live without ash dieback, is a magnificent tree right here. Anyway, that is my little soapbox of what biodiversity should look like.